So, Battlefield 5 has finally been revealed to the world. It's a World War II game that will encompass the entire scope of the war from the fall of Europe all the way to the push on Berlin. Now the reveal was awesome, we got plenty of information, and in this video I'm going to round up everything you need to know about Battlefield 5. Now as a disclaimer, I was part of a call yesterday, May 22nd, where EA gave myself and lots of other press members, YouTubers, streamers and community members early access to this information, and I think they gave us some exclusive information as well, so you can be confident that all of this information is indeed correct. Now we've got a lot to get through, so make sure you're sitting comfortably and let's get right into it. DICE is doing with Battlefield 5 setting what it did with Battlefield 1's. It's taking us to unseen locations, telling untold stories, and bringing us unplayed gameplay moments. Only this time, we're doing that in the Second World War, not the First World War. During the call, however, the developers were quick to note that Battlefield 5 is not just a quick jump from Battlefield 1. They've built upon Battlefield 1 as a base, but changed a lot of things and implemented a load of new features to make sure core and long-standing players of the franchise know that their feedback was actually heard. Battlefield 1 cast the net extremely wide with its mechanics, trying to appeal to as many different gamers as possible, and that put off a lot of the veteran players who'd come to the franchise for, frankly, something else. It diluted the core Battlefield experience. This time around, DICE is putting the franchise right back on track with focuses on squad play, physicality, the war of attrition and scarcity, and more player control. New game modes like Airborne will be introduced where you power drop into the map and attempt to plant explosives on key assets, Frontlines returns from Battlefield 1 with some twists, and the operations that you know and love from Battlefield 1 are back as well, but again, they're not quite the same. They've been improved. Firstly then, let's talk about squad play. For the longest time, as far as I can remember, DICE has emphasised that Battlefield is a franchise where working with your squad and your team should lead to better results and more enjoyable experiences. But there's no denying that since probably Bad Company 2, the games have strayed further and further away from that mantra. But Battlefield 5 is writing the ship, so to speak. As an example, every time you launch into Battlefield 5's multiplayer, you will be placed directly into a squad. You don't have to find one anymore, you don't have to choose one for yourself, the game will put you straight into one. And that should be enough to tell you that DICE are serious about this squad play initiative. Now, the interplay between squad members is more important than ever because of the War of Attrition. Now, this is a system that DICE is using to rebalance the way you play Battlefield games. Scarcity is a big factor, both in terms of ammunition and health. You'll now spawn in with less ammunition than you did in previous titles, your soldier's health only regenerates up to a certain point, and spotting players now functions very, very differently. Sticking with your squad will benefit you both in the short and long term in Battlefield 5. Now when I heard that DICE was taking this route with Battlefield 5, I was excited, and I think a lot of longer time Battlefield players will be excited about this as well. You now need to interact with the world around you a lot more to obtain things that you need to stay alive. Heading over to an ammo crate and having to interact with it, rather than magically getting the ammo by running past it. Heading directly to a conquest flag to resupply and get health from different stations to top yourself back Back up. Battlefield 5 is really changing the game here. One of the highlight features, however, of this squad play system is the new Buddy Revive. The Medic class in Battlefield 5 retains the ability to revive any player on their team, whether they are a squad member or not, but every player within a squad has the ability to conduct a Buddy Revive on other members of that squad. Now this revive takes much longer than a standard revive that the Medic could perform, and it only revives the fallen player to a small amount of health, but it adds another interplay element to the squad mantra. The revive animations also so are much more physical now, and they take longer than in previous games, and that makes revives more meaningful and important, according to DICE. 
And lastly, for this squad play element of the video, I'd like to talk about the brand new death loop that's coming to Battlefield 5. This is the sequence that starts from the moment you die to the moment that you spawn back onto the map again. DICE has added a new squad spawn screen. It features an over-the-shoulder camera of all of your squad mates that are alive, so you can pick one and dive right back into the action with the same loadout that you died with, and that gives the squad the backup that they need. There's a proper bleed out screen as well now. After you die, you're taken to this screen and you can literally scream at your squad mates asking for help or you can accelerate your bleed out so that you can jump back to the squad screen and you can spawn back in again. Now the tabletop map view that we see in Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 4 is still there, but that sits above the squad spawn screen in the loop and gives you all the information that it did in previous games. It's still there, but it's a place you're only likely to visit if your squad is completely wiped and you have no one left to spawn on. Moving on now to something completely different, but I think a topic that lots of Battlefield players out there will want to know about, and that is the gunplay coming to Battlefield 5. Now, it's going to be music to your ears that this system has been totally redesigned and is totally different to Battlefield 1. All weapons will have predictability built into them in terms of their recoil patterns. That will allow you to learn and master the guns the more you use them. The developers on the call I was on described it with the following statement. Where I aim and shoot is where my bullets will go, which as a mainline infantry player is something awesome to hear. Battlefield 1's gunplay is a little bit spongy, it's quite unpredictable, and for want of a better word, it's random. This new system appears to be anything but that. As an addition, LMGs, stationary machine guns and vehicle machine guns, I believe, have bullet penetration built in now, so support players can hammer bullets through walls and disrupt scenarios playing out on the other side of them. Jump shooting is back as well. Once you reach the apex of a jump and you start to fall, you're able to fire your weapon, which is something that Battlefield 1 took away. That's now back in the game. I'm super excited to give that a go. Beyond that, there wasn't a huge amount of information given about the gun mechanics in the game. I'm sure we're going to get more information moving on into the future, but I thought I'd get that in early on in the video because I know how many people were disappointed with the gunplay in Battlefield 1. Now moving on from gunplay into the physicality that DICE is introducing and building on in Battlefield 5. These are some rather big gameplay changes and they're really going to switch up your movement during matches and how you interact with the world around you. And that includes destruction as well, I'll get onto that later on in the video. In Battlefield 5, your soldier is going to react to the environment much more than it did before. In its third person form, so when other players are looking at you, it's going to change the way that it moves depending on what's happening around it. So for example, if you're moving through knee high water, your soldier is going to start wading through it, bringing its legs up higher, rather than slowing down to a jog or a walk and then just slowly moving through the water. When running up to a wall or a solid object, your soldier is going to put weight into that movement and slam into cover like it was looking for cover in the first place. You can now sprint while you're in a crouch stance. You won't move as fast as a full sprint, but it will allow you to keep a low profile. You can now drag teammates who are bleeding out, waiting for a revive, and you can move them into a safer spot for a medic to come along and then help them. Maybe that means less revives whilst in enemy line of fire. A really cool one, ragdoll death animations, you know where you go flying across the map when you die from a grenade, they are now tied to the server in Battlefield 5 and not your client, and that means every player on the server whose vision you're in at the time can see that ragdoll movement. That means medics need to revive you where your body lands, as opposed to previous games where they would revive you where they saw you die. And I know that's a small change, but I imagine it's going to make a fairly big difference to revives. You can loot dead enemies for their ammunition, which while being one of those physical actions is also an extension of the War of Attrition. Ammo scarcity really comes into play, and now you have another option to obtain that ammo. You can also dive to the sides, you can fall back 
back behind you, lay on your back and fire forwards between your legs at advancing enemies as well. Diving straight through windows is now a thing too. Doesn't need to be a broken window either. You can just dive straight through and make a quick escape. There's so many new things coming to movement in Battlefield 1 that, well, that's probably not even the full list, but that's what I picked out from the call. That is just so much stuff. Now, one of the bigger physicality changes sits with the destruction system and the brand new fortification system. Let's start with destruction. It's now more dynamic than it's ever been before. Let's say you smash a tank through a house. It's going to leave a tank-shaped hole behind it, but now it's going to reflect that tank a little bit more than it did in previous titles. This is the initial stage of destruction. Then, any hanging debris that's left after the initial impact will, over time, depending on their weight, fall of their own accord. Materials like wood are lighter and will take a little bit less time to fall, whereas concrete is heavier and that's going to fall a little bit quicker after the initial impact. Really cool stuff. If you fire a tank shell through a window and it explodes inside the house, the destruction result will blow out of the house with force, rather than just falling to the ground. And if you hit the outer wall with that tank shell, the force will explode into the house, rather than just falling on the ground again. And that creates a different experience for destruction every single time. DICE is really stepping up their game here. And then there's fortifications. This is DICE's new mechanic to almost reverse destruction, but to do so in an authentic and believable way. Every single class in the game now has access to the fortification system. You get a toolbox as one of your gadgets, and you can bring that up whenever you like, but it is a staple of the support class. Around different objectives, you'll be able to build sandbag walls, machine gun nests and emplacements, barbed wire fixings and things like that to block off lines of sight, you can stop traversal paths and even more. These things can then be used as cover by the team that built them, or the team that succeeds in taking over the objective. They can also be fully destroyed, like most other cover in the game, and the support class has the added ability of being able to repair fortifications if they become damaged, and potentially that extends the amount of time a team has to prepare before an enemy team arrives and starts shooting at them. The really exciting part, though, is you can build up fortifications on damaged and destroyed buildings. You could add a sandbag wall in the place of the upstairs wall that just got blasted out by a tank shell, or you can add a machine gun placement where a window used to be. Fortifications are reverse destruction, and it gives the players more control over the environment they're playing in. It sounds really, really cool. Moving on from the physicality and destructions now, another big thing to talk about is Grand Operations, the new and improved offshoot of operations from Battlefield 1. Now, instead of static battles and scenarios, DICE has built a modular system of different game modes, maps, armies, weaponry and content that will change as the game moves across the entire breadth of World War II. Grand Operations is still a game mode in a sense, but it takes lots of elements from Battlefield 5 and wraps them up into another 45 minute to an hour experience where you either fight as the attackers or the defenders. It's now separated into four distinct in-game days, day one, two, three, and four. These aren't real life calendar days. Don't worry, you're not gonna have to sit in front of your computer or your Xbox or PlayStation for four days to play this game mode, but each day within the grand operation represents a different match within the grand operation. So you've got a potential total of four different matches within one operation. How the attacking team performs in each of the quote-unquote days will be reflected in the resources and reinforcements that they get in the next day. Each day in the operation will be a different game mode from Battlefield 5. That could be Airborne, Breakthrough, Conquest Assault and even more. And you'll always play at least three of the four days regardless of how the attacking and defending teams perform. The huge battle that you're taking part in doesn't just end because you failed to destroy all the target artillery placements in the airborne game mode, you'll simply start the next day with less reinforcements because that artillery was shelling the army that's coming in behind you. 
DICE has now full control of how these grand operations are set up, including which game modes happen on which day, which weapons are available to you, which vehicles can be spawned in, reinforcement wave amounts, weather and even more. It's entirely modular. Essentially, Grand Operations will be an experience that sits in place for a while to be played by the community, and then DICE can change it up into something else and follow a completely different narrative. This sounds really, really awesome. I can't wait to give this a go. And actually, that segues quite nicely into my next topic the way Battlefield 5 is going to be supported. Grand Operations is going to be a big part of the live service of Battlefield 5. The Premium Pass is totally gone. There will be no more community splitting DLC models in this game whatsoever, and the entire point of the live service that DICE is calling the Tides of War is to keep the community together on a journey across the entirety of World War II, giving players the chance to play with new content and collect new gear along the way as everybody ranks up their soldiers and classes. Progression is being given a very high priority as well. DICE recognised that progression in Battlefield 1 could have been better, and that's just saying the least, and so therefore as part of the Tides of War and the main base game too, a series of daily, weekly and special assignments will be created on a regular basis and they're going to run alongside all of your soldier progression, class progression, weapon progression and vehicle progression as well. As part of the live service, there will be limited time game modes for people to play that fit into the narrative of what's being told at the time. Mutations to gameplay might be present. Of course, there's going to be new content like maps, weapons, factions, game modes, vehicles, and even more. And all of that is going to tie into the current status of the war as you move through and will offer you pass to attain in-game currency so you can unlock new cosmetic items and different things within the game. Battlefield 5 is going in heavy on the cosmetic customization front. There will be player, weapon and visual vehicle customization in Battlefield 1. On your soldier, you'll be able to choose different helmets, different face structures, you can change the gender of your soldier, male and female, you can have war paints on your face, there's different upper torso clothing options, lower torso options and boots as well. On your weapons, and this is separate to the standard weapon customization that's coming to Battlefield 1, I'll talk about that in a minute, you'll be able to customize the look of your weapons with skins and camos. And lastly, for vehicles, you're going to be looking at things like sandbags, boxes, camos, and more. Now, not much further was given during the call about visual customization, but I imagine we will see some more of that at EA Play. And lastly today, we're going to talk about your company. This is your collection of soldiers, weapons, vehicles and customizations all in one place so that you can manage everything that you've got, build new soldiers, create new weapon loadouts and everything in between. Essentially, you're going to be able to create different soldiers for different scenarios. Under each of the main four classes, Assault, Medic, Support and Scout, DICE is introducing something called archetypes. These are specialised versions of the different classes that have different abilities, different perks that make them different from the standard class. You can take one of those, apply different weapons and gadgets to them and completely change the look of your soldier with visual customization. When it comes to the weapons and vehicles within the company, if you want to build a weapon, you can unlock that, and then as you start to use the weapon, you will unlock different branches of a progression tree within that weapon itself. These are like specializations for the gun, which essentially is the customization. So you'll go through a tree, maybe you pick a muzzle brake one way, a bipod another, a different grip here, something else. All those options will be available to you, and depending on what you want to do with that weapon, you can choose a different path. The exact same thing applies for vehicles as well. The company is essentially a visual way of representing everything that you've unlocked in Battlefield 5, and it's a way for you to customise and deep dive into everything you've got and build new things. So that's the company, and I said that was the final thing, but there is one more thing I want to tell you. After all of this awesome information, when is Battlefield 5 actually launching? 
Well, there are a few dates that you guys will need to consider. A Play First trial will go live for EA Access and Origin Access members on October the 11th, the Deluxe Edition of the game, that will launch on October the 16th, and the Standard Edition of the game, that will launch on October the 19th. And so there you are, after just about 20 minutes, I think that's everything you need to know right now about Battlefield 5. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you found it informative. Share it with your friends so they can be right up to date with the game and make sure you are subscribed to the channel with notifications switched on so you don't miss any of my future Battlefield 5 videos. Make sure you leave some comments down below. Let me know what you're thinking about Battlefield 5. If you want to know how I'm thinking, I'm extremely excited for this game. But again, thank you very much for watching and until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.